Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Rust Belt Collector here. This is take two of this video because I recorded this initially when I first got this haul and I tried to have it be, you know, an authentic sort of reaction to what I got. And unfortunately the audio was just atrocious and I could not put your ears through that torture. And so we're re-recording it, but we're going to have it be a little bit less of a reaction and more just uh, a showcase, I suppose. So the other day I was on Facebook Marketplace and I saw this listing go up less than an hour ago. I messaged the people right away. I was able to get a meeting and I drove down after work and I picked this up. The Darth Vader case is awesome. It's a vintage Star Wars 1980s-ish uh, Star Wars case, and it is filled with vintage Star Wars action figures, and I was blown away by finding this haul. Typically, my Facebook marketplace is, you know, kind of hit or miss. I think everyone kind of knows what that's like, especially if you live in a smaller town like I do. There's just not as many people posting, and so your finds are kind of limited. But every once in a blue moon, you find something great, and I think this is kind of the collector's, every collector's dream find, the attic find, right? Like, even though this was technically found in a shed, uh, Basically, the older couple that I bought this from was doing some spring cleaning. Their kids did not want this. Uh, in fact, their kids never wanted this. <laughs> the, the, these figures were actually the older couples, and their kids never wanted to play with them. So this has been in storage for probably the last 30-some years, at least based on what they were telling me. So it's really awesome that it survived that long, especially in an outdoor shed. You know, it's not like in an attic. So it's been exposed to some weather fluctuations and, you know, that kind of thing. But no mold, no mildew, and no yellowing from plastics or anything like that from sunlight and things like that. So really, really a grail find when it comes to vintage figures. So really the first thing in this haul is the case itself. It's a 1980s vintage Darth Vader case. They made two different versions, I think. They made the Darth Vader and they made the C-3PO, but let's be real, like, I think most kids are kind of like, Darth Vader, they want the Darth Vader case, because C-3PO is just kind of like a, hmm, droid. This guy, big bad villain, really cool character design. And, you know, the case is kind of dirty. I haven't washed this, though I did wash... Uh, some of the other figures after I recorded this the first time, so you'll see them all nice and clean and not all gross and grimy like they were in the first attempt at this video, but the case I haven't washed yet, still kind of dusty, but really, really awesome. You can see it's a little scuffed up, but that just means it's doing its job. It's a case. It's meant to protect, but the really cool thing here is if we open this up, drops down just like this and then like that, <laughs> but what's really cool here is that it has this, the original paper insert. This is just something that would have been included in the original packaging, and I feel like most kids probably either lost this or threw it away after after getting this, because there's really no purpose to keeping it other than, you know, advertising, but it's really awesome to see this. This is all photography done by the man who shot Luke Skywalker. That's his uh, Instagram tag. I was fortunate enough to meet him down in Columbus last year. He did all of the photography for Kenner back in the day, and I'm just going to assume that this is one of his pieces as well. And you can see all the figures from, I think, Wave 1 and 2, you know, uh, New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, all here represented on the cards. And this is marked 1977, 78, and 1980, Lucasfilm. And then over here, I find this really awesome. It says, a subsidiary of General Mills Incorporated by its division, Kenner Products, Cincinnati, Ohio. And if you know anything about this channel here, Rust Belt Collector, uh, oddly enough, like many toy channels here on YouTube, which is really odd, I'm from Ohio. So having this piece, uh, this whole collection rather, in the collection is so cool because it's a little piece of Ohio history. I'm not from Cincinnati, but I am from Ohio. And this is a piece of that history. You know, Kenner producing the original Star Wars action figures basically is the launch pad for everything else on this channel. Every other Star Wars figure, it all started right here. So then let's dive into the more interesting element, the action figures themselves. And there are quite a few to go over here, so I won't try to linger on them for too long, but I love these figures so much. <laughs> it's, it's hard not to talk about each one for like five minutes. So first up, we have this Han Solo in his Hoth gear. 
The paint work here is actually really nice. Like there's a little bit of paint chipping on the hands and on the feet, a couple places like down at the bottom. But overall, this figure is really, really nice. Like the condition is just amazing. And you will see that with several of the figures from this lot, they're really, really pristine. Some are a little bit beat up, some have been played with, but some are just practically fresh out of the package. But yeah, Winter Han Solo. I, I love this figure. I don't have the blaster, unfortunately. This is actually kind of fun, a little fun fact of Rust Belt Collector growing up. I actually had this figure from a garage sale. I think I paid like 25 cents back in the day. It was way worse condition than this, but that was one of the just random figures that wound up in my collection. I don't think I have it anymore. It might be stored away in some bin, but I highly doubt it. Next, we have the Rebel Hoth Commander or Hoth Rebel Commander. I don't know, but we have his little blaster here, which is cool. I guess it's hard to see against the case, but there you go. There's his little blaster. You can actually take that and loop that onto his shoulder, which is a fun little play feature there. But yeah, there he is. He's got a very nice 1980s mustache. I dig it. I, I like that a lot. I love the classic like G.I. Joe and Star Wars characters that always just have such amazing mustaches. Then, of course, what Star Wars vintage lot would be complete without a Stormtrooper? I think everyone at least had one of these in their collection, if not more. And this guy, he's... He's a little beat up. He's got some pretty bad paint chipping on the hands and stuff. And you know, that really doesn't bother me because I didn't buy this because the figures were mint condition or anything. I bought it because it was a good deal on some vintage figures. And with vintage figures, at least in my collection, I don't really care if they're beat up, you know? If they've got some paint issues and they're weathered and yellowed and all that kind of stuff, it just means that they were enjoyed. They're, they're toys. And so I do actually kind of like having at least a couple figures in my collection like that are just beat up. They're played with. They're damaged and broken. But they're, they're, there's like a certain quality to that. You know, it just means that they did their job well. They were, they were toys and they were played with. I'm not a mint collector. I really don't care about having the most minty, fresh, on-card packaged figures I kind of like to have characters that have a little uh, character. <laughs> Pun intended. I like characters that have character. Moving on, we have everyone's favorite robot bounty hunter, or at least one of my favorites growing up, Zuckus, or Forlom, depending on what packaging you got. Back in the day, on the vintage card backs, uh, Kenner got the names wrong between Forlom and Zuckus, and they named this guy Zuckus, and they named the other guy Forlom, but technically, this guy is Forlom, or 4-L-O-M, however you want to pronounce it. But yeah, they got the names wrong, the packaging wrong. So like, if you go on eBay and you look up this figure, most people will have it listed as Zuckus, because that's what most collectors will be looking for when they when they look up that name. It's, it's kind of a neat little thing, and Hasbro actually referenced that uh, when they released the 6-inch retro-carded version of these. For Amazon, they did Zuckus and Forlom, and they had the names reversed but technically right if you're referencing the Kenner line it's confusing but they referenced that mistake from the original line which I think is clever also I just got to say I love how big and ridiculous his blaster is he definitely did not use this in the movie but uh yeah it's very 1980s G.I. Joe Star Wars classic toy you know over the top insane blaster <laughs> and I absolutely love it just imagine like this droid walking around very slowly with just a mega blaster like this. Next up we have two Ewoks. Uh, I think we have Log Ray and Chief Chirpa here, both with all their accessories, which is really, really cool. Again, not all of these have their accessories, but the ones that do, it's just it's so awesome to see these figures with accessories. I have a couple vintage figures in my collection. None of them have accessories, so this is really awesome to see. But yeah, we have some, we have some Ewoks, some fun little killer teddy bears to add to the collection. Following that up, we have Squidhead, which is, oddly enough, one of the figures I have several of. I think I have two Squidhead now, uh, complete with their tunic and everything. I don't know why, I just always loved this character. He may not be my favorite vintage figure, but he's definitely up there just because of the... I think these guys are like Aqualish or something. I can't remember the species name, but I always liked their, their design. And so I have at least two of them. Not intentionally, I just happened to have two of them, and now three of them, this time complete with his little blaster, and yeah, I, I dig this figure. Also, just as a fun note, you know, he has soft goods, which is really cool back in, you know, the 80s when this figure was first released. Soft goods just seemed so premium, or they seem premium to me. It seems like everything was molded plastic, and to give 
a background character like Squidhead a cloth cape and a cloth tunic, I think that's so awesome. And to go along with Forlom, Zuckus, whoever you want to call him, we have IG-88 and Bosk. IG-88 doesn't have his blaster, unfortunately. He's just a tall robot that can stand there looking cool like he did in Empire Strikes Back. But we have Bosk here, and he actually has his blaster, which is so cool. Uh, it's like cast in a dark blue, which is kind of common for a lot of the weapons here with the Star Wars line. I think that's also kind of just fun, you know, the, the wacky colors that things got cast in back in the day, you know, for whatever reason, they liked blue weapons with the Star Wars Kenner line. And I always liked Bosk, both his design as this figure and also just his design as a, uh, as a character in general. It was really cool. I always wondered if his flight suit was like a, a Rebel's flight suit, you know, maybe like he stripped it off of a Rebel pilot and he wore it. But in reality, in, in real life, in the real world, uh, it's actually a Doctor Who prop that was repurposed for Bosk in Star Wars. Uh, Doctor Who back in the day was filmed in black and white, so you wouldn't see that it was a yellow jumpsuit, but this jumpsuit was actually just repurposed from BBC and put on Bosk as a little background character, and now it's kind of iconic. And of course, we have Chewbacca here, one of the original characters, and I believe this is one of the original, like, A New Hope figures. Most of these in this lot are going to be from Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, but I think that this one is one of the original New Hope figures, unless maybe they re-released it for the additional movies. I don't know. I'm, I will admit I'm not the most uh, well-versed in the vintage realm. It's not what I grew up with. I appreciate it for what it is. I like having it represented in my collection, but I'm not as much of an expert as someone who maybe grew up with these figures would be, so I can only give uh, partial information on a lot of these things. I may be incorrect, and if so, politely correct me down in the comments below so I can learn a little bit more. And we have a Tusken Raider. Now, this one I definitely know is from A New Hope. I don't think they ever re-released this figure. I love that it has its vinyl cape. I've actually never handled a vinyl cape up until now. Uh, just all the vintage figures I've ever had just were missing these because I think that they got brittle with age or they got torn off, you know, from kids playing with the figures. And yeah, surprisingly, he's actually pretty beat up in the head for some reason, like a lot of the paint's worn off, yet the tunic, the cape, is still intact with really no issues, no tears or discolorations, which is really, really cool. I dig that. Unfortunately, he doesn't have his gaffy stick, but I guess you can have him making his classic Tusken Raider noises while uh, going down a roller coaster or something. Now, this one is perfect if you've been watching the Book of Boba Fett, or I guess rather the end of Season 2 of The Mandalorian. We have Bib Fortuna, and he's got this really cool velvet cloak, little rubberized uh, armor piece in here. And yeah, this is the Revenge of the Sith version, of course. It's not his uh, his Book of Boba Fett version like Hasbro's been releasing recently, but this is such a cool figure. Definitely not one that like I think a lot of kids would have been racing to get back in the day. You know, it's like, oh, a background character, the guy that goes with Jabba the Hutt, I guess. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, I think it's cool. I, I actually really dig this figure. I love the teal plastic that they used for his overall body mold. And yeah, uh, a little fun fact that I absolutely love is that this staff is just made up by Kenner. This was not from the movie or anything. They just made it up as a little accessory to give him. And then in turn, uh, Lucasfilm gave him this staff in season two of The Mandalorian slash Book of Boba Fett. You know, that whole scene where Boba Fett returns and shoots him and, you know, takes the throne. This staff was recreated as a movie prop and it originated from this Kenner figure. I just, I love that little little tidbit of, of uh, lore there, I guess. It's just kind of fun to, to think about how that evolved from figure to an on-screen prop. Next, we're getting into some more Imperials, and we'll start it off with General Veers. Yes, General Veers, or the At-At Commander, or at, at Commander. I've always personally said at, at It's said both ways. It's kind of a silly argument. You can say it however you want, and you're still a real Star Wars fan. But yeah, General Veers, or the at, -AT Commander. Cool figure. Like, you know, it's a cool Imperial. If you were a kid, I think these would be the figures you'd want to have because you got to have you got to have the bad guys. You know, once you get like one Luke Skywalker, one Han Solo, that's enough. But you got to have a bunch of baddies. So you could buy a couple of these, a couple snowtroopers, a couple stormtroopers, have a real 
army build of those and you know do battle in your living room or whatever and once again this figure just feels so clean and crisp like the paint apps are still really solid there's no real paint chipping or anything like that especially on the face which is really surprising but i don't know like i've never really had a, a mint on card or any, like a graded figure or anything but i feel like a figure like this would almost be qualified for grading if I had his accessories, which unfortunately I don't, but it's really sweet to handle these figures with this kind of condition and just kind of imagine like what it must have been like to get these back in the 80s, you know, for Christmas or a birthday or because you mowed a lawn and you had some pocket change, you'd run down to the corner and pick up a vintage Star Wars figure, which at the time, well, I guess it wasn't a vintage figure back then, it was just Star Wars figures, this is what you would have. Following that up with the Snowtrooper, this one is a little yellowed, like like his Stormtrooper compatriot back there. It could just be from age, but honestly, I feel like these might have been the ones that everyone liked to play with back in the day. You know, it's they're troopers. They're cool. I think these are the coolest. These are the ones that I would have chosen. But yeah, he's a little grimy, especially in the creases of his mold there. But, you know, still a cool figure. Paint apps are still pretty much intact, which I really like to see. And he has his vinyl cape, which is... A very very uncommon thing to find with these um, unfortunately it's a little bit torn right up the side there I'm gonna try and reinforce that maybe with some tape or something just so that that doesn't tear completely through but you know he's got his blaster he's got his cape it's really awesome to find a snowtrooper in this condition I absolutely love that I I will never have too many vintage Imperials you know you can you can never have too many if I could if I had the space, I would love to have, you know, a dozen or two stormtroopers, bike scouts, officers and all that and kind of do like a mini recreation of the landing scene with like the shuttle, Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader and like have all the troopers lined up. That to me would just be the perfect way to have a small corner of my collection dedicated to the vintage line. And next up we have the AT-AT driver, this time with his blaster, which is again this really cool little... I guess maybe made up blaster, though I feel like this kind of looks like one of the heavy blasters used in the new Battlefront 2, so I kind of wonder if maybe they took some reference from this figure, which would be really cool if they did. Once again, you can kind of sling that on his shoulder if you feel so inclined. This is another one of the ones that just feels like it's in nearly mint condition. There are some scuffs on the gloves and shoulders, but like, apart from that, he's still got the shine, you know, a lot of that gets scratched off and they become a little bit more dull over time. He is shiny, like he is fresh out of the package. I absolutely love that. And you wouldn't really think that this would be a cool character. It's just, you know, a driver. But for me, for some reason, the, the orange, like that burnt orange and the black and the gray, really makes this figure stand out to me. I absolutely love this figure. And I never thought I would say that. Like, it's just the at, -AT driver. It's nothing really special, but... Something about those little highlight colors really makes this figure stand out to me. Next up, we have everyone's favorite little junk dealers, a Jawa. It's not the rare vinyl cape figure. I do know that little bit of Star Wars information. I know that one's a little bit more rare, but this one is still really cool. He's got these soft goods, which sort of feel unnecessary when he's already in a sculpted, you know, fabric cloak. Like, <laughs> I don't understand why they chose to give this one soft goods when it's already literally sculpted onto the figure, but it's still cool. It's it's still nice to see these soft good accessories included, and it's really awesome to find them intact all the way in 2022. Like, that just is so crazy to me to be able to find a lot like this just pulled out of somebody's shed. Then next up we have Lando Calrissian, everyone's favorite scoundrel. I like this figure. It's got a vinyl cape included and not damaged or torn, which is really, again, awesome to see. And, you know, it's kind of cool to have another character, like a main character. So uh, maybe I'll make an effort to track down like a Bespin Han, Bespin Leia, and then I can have the characters from Empire Strikes Back all on display. I don't know. I, I don't really know what direction I'll go with the vintage figures. Definitely not going to go completionist or anything like that, but... Kind of uh, kind of considering what I might do for a shelf display for these guys now. Then we have a couple of those wonderful played with and beat up figures. We have the Death Star droid with that awesome chrome design. I love that C-3PO and the Death Star droid got the chrome treatment. It's just so cool, so shiny. Uh, he's a little bit beat up though. He's he's seen some love. The black paint is pretty pretty weathered here. But then we also have this R2, same deal. He's a little scuffed up there in the front. 
and his stickers are very, very yellowed, but still intact. That's the cool part. The, the stickers are still there and not like peeled off or water damaged or anything like that. So I love to see that. These are a little bit beat up, but still so charming. Then we have the famous medical duo, the FX7 droid. Amazingly, with all of its legs still intact, or arms, I guess. I guess those would technically be arms, but yeah, not broken off or anything. I'm a little scared that maybe they will, but it still is really cool to have this one. And then we have, sadly, the medical droid. I think the 21B medical droid. He's missing an arm, but he still has one arm to help heal people. This is probably one of my favorite vintage figures as well, and not because it's like some main character. It's strictly because of the color. I think I mentioned this in one of my really old videos where I picked up one of these from a toy show. Uh, phew, wow, probably back in like 2019, 2018. I love this coloration. This like turquoise color and the gray, the silver steel kind of gray color that they use here. I don't know why. I love this figure strictly for the color. It's just so cool. Maybe it's time for me to like army build these guys, kind of like how some some people will just buy nothing but vintage Boba Fetts or vintage Stormtroopers or something. Maybe I should army build the, uh, the 2-1B medical droid. To go along with Lando, we have a Bespin guard here. Uh, again, with that wonderful 80s mustache. He's, he's really out there to get all the ladies, you know? He's got the, he's got the stash for it. What I love about this figure is just that really nice gold trim going on with his uniform. Really, really makes it stand out. Next up, we have one of the more uncommon or maybe more rare figures in this haul. We have Vintage Yoda with all of his little accessories, which is so amazing to see here. He's got his little cane, a little orange snake to go around his neck for whatever reason. That's just something that Kenner decided to include there. But I absolutely love this version of Yoda. It's just so it's just so iconic and so great. Just a fun representation of the character from the movie. This is definitely one of the highlights from this haul. Just finding a complete Yoda like this. Then we have an Imperial Red Guard. I really love this figure. I don't know why. The Red Guards were always just so cool to me. And this vintage version is is no less cool to me. It's not really anything you would do that much with as a kid, I feel like. You know, you get some, some arm movement, some leg movement a little bit here. But mostly in the movies, they just kind of stand there. And you get a staff, so you can stand there holding a staff. But I love their design. I love that it has this really cool soft goods tunic here on the figure, as well as like an under tunic, which is, you know, above and beyond what you really needed for a background character. But... I guess now I really gotta track down another one of these and maybe a vintage Vader so I can have those on display, but for sure, one of the coolest vintage figures. All right, coming down to the end here, we've got an Imperial Officer, which is actually a vintage figure I've never had before. I didn't even really know that this guy existed until buying this lot. Again, that just comes down to me not being super aware of what the vintage line fully had. In fact, I thought that I had a couple of the, the famous last 17 figures because I got those Ewoks and I got a Luke Skywalker, which I'll show next. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, I actually don't have the last 17, which is fine. Again, I, I don't really care, but I just, that shows how inexperienced I am with having vintage figures, but I'm learning and it's a fun thing to learn. It's a fun new element of my collection and of this channel to learn about some vintage figures and also add them to the collection at the same time. But yeah, nothing really too crazy with this figure, just another Imperial. You know, as a kid, if you had like the Death Star playset or something like that, I'm sure you'd want quite a few of these to just stand around in the hallways, I guess. And now rounding things out with the last couple figures, this is the one that I saw partially in the photo on Facebook Marketplace that made me uh, kind of panic a little bit. I saw that this was a Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker. I didn't know if he had his lightsaber or his blaster, but once I bought it and got it home, I found both in the case and I could not be happier. This is such a cool figure. I know it's a little bit on the more expensive, uncommon side of things. I don't really know too much. But yeah, this is, I mean, honestly, I thought this was one of the last 17. I was very wrong about that. It's the Endor Luke that is part of the last 17. But still, this is such a cool figure. I love that this is what they used for lightsabers, just a little plastic baton, basically. Just, it's, it's fun. It's so, uh, it's got character. It's got character for the time that these were released. I absolutely love that. He has a little snap there for his cloak, or you can really just kind of, you know, pull that off of his head just like that. Definitely not the uh, the face printing that we're used to from Hasbro these days, 
but still really cool. And I do just love the uh, the face printing on these old Star Wars and G.I. Joe figures. There's so much character there trying to work with the technology they had at the time. I, I love it. I, I really do. I love the simplicity of these vintage figures. And having one like this that's so iconic and sought after is really awesome in the collection. I don't think I would ever have this figure if it wasn't for the deal that I got on this Facebook haul. And then finally, I guess you could say I saved the best for last. We have a gonk droid. <laughs> I absolutely love this figure. In fact, this is probably my favorite figure of this entire haul. Just a simple little gonk droid. I love the dark blue they used for the character. Again, we have that nice burnt orange, the same as the at at driver over there. I'm going to call them both at at and at at in the same video just because that way I can appease both sides of the fandom, I guess. But yeah, it's just such a simple little character, one you really don't even see that much of in the movie. A little sticker there to represent his faceplate, a little piece of rubber there for, I guess, like an antenna. But yeah, there's just something so simple and cool about this little droid here. It actually has a bit of a play feature, unlike most of these figures. It has little, uh... Yeah, little ratcheted legs. It's not much of a play feature, it's more just a noise, but it still adds to the character of this figure, and I absolutely love it. With these vintage figures, something about the simplicity and the color choices is iconic for the era, but also just... It's cool. I really don't know how to describe it. I did not grow up with these at all. Like, I mean, I picked up a couple at a garage sale here and there, like with the Han Solo back there, but something about them just stands out to me. Whether it's the color or the design choices, they just have something timeless about them, and I love that. Now then, finally, I have a couple accessories left over. I'm trying to think. I believe that this baton goes with the 21B medical droid. I think for whatever reason they gave him just a little, uh, little baton, a little healing wand. Maybe he's like Harry Potter in the Star Wars universe. You know, he's, ah, the boy who lived, come to die. Ah, yes, that's, that's what, this is Voldemort, actually. This is the Star Wars Voldemort, perfect. And then this one, I thought maybe just went to like a snow trooper or something, but I'm wondering if this is IG-88's blaster. I'm going to give it to him for the sake of this video, but I will look it up later and, you know, double check that that's actually what he goes with. I'm, I'm not totally sure. I thought he came with, like, a Stormtrooper E-11 or something, but maybe that's just the modern Hasbro version. Either way, there it is. There is the full haul, and I am absolutely blown away with this. I mean, again, I don't typically find hauls like this. This feels like sort of a once-in-a-lifetime thing that I'm going to find this where it's, you know... Uh, grandma's attic type find very much so uh, every collector's dream find and if that's if this is the only time this ever happens i am a 100 percent okay with that it was such a good exciting day to get this i paid a hundred dollars for everything you see here including the case and i feel like that's not a price that i'm really ever going to find anywhere else you know so if this never happens again it's amazing that i got to experience this once and i'm so happy that i did but who knows, maybe somewhere locally I will find uh, a, a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa who is cleaning out a garage or an attic and they find a box of 2005 to 2015 clone troopers. Maybe uh, that would be amazing. And uh, maybe I will be so lucky as to be the person that finds that listing on Facebook Marketplace. But I'm not counting on it. <laughs> I definitely am not counting on it. But, but you know how many of those were made. And just like there are still attic finds of these vintage figures... I'm sure that there are still addicts full of Star Wars figures from my era, and hopefully someday I'll just find someone that has like 100 Kashyyyk Troopers and 100 Phase 2 Clone Wars clones just chilling in a bin somewhere, and then they'll be like, hey, that Rust Belt guy likes those. Here, uh, $5 a piece, and I will... I'd be very happy if I ever had that happen. <laughs> I would. Let's just be honest. I think anybody would, but you know what? If that never happens, that's okay. It's all about the thrill of the hunt, the thrill of the chase. And this just popped up randomly. And I get to make a video talking about vintage figures here on the channel now because of that. And I'm so grateful to have found this deal, have this in the collection. And it's not going anywhere. These aren't going to leave the collection. These are going to be on display as, as many as possible. I may not be able to put all of them up right now but I will have a nice selection, maybe have like some of the Imperials grouped beside some of the Rebels or something like that. But 
Either way, uh, yeah, there it is. There's there's my Facebook vintage haul. As always, if you want to keep up with the channel, there's a link down in the description to my Instagram. I actually posted this up on my Instagram first. I meant to have them post simultaneously, but because of the audio quality issues, that didn't happen. But yeah, you can follow me over on Instagram. Just link down in the description. There's a link tree. You can follow that to all those things. And if you feel so inclined, you can like, comment, and subscribe to my channel here. Uh, that, that means a lot to me. All you guys that watch my videos and enjoy my content, I'm really appreciative of you all. But that's where we're wrapping this video up. So as always, have a wonderful evening, noon, or night, depending on when you're watching this video. Thank you all again so much for watching this video. And as always, I will catch you all in the next video.